बार बार एग्जाम दे रहे हैं और रिजल्ट नहीं आ रहा है और इतना अच्छा स्कोर नहीं आ रहा है स्पीकिंग में बार बार फेल हो रहे हैं जो सबसे ईजी सेक्शन है क्या करें कैसे करें बार बार एग्जाम देने के बाद भी स्कोर नहीं आ रहा है किस तरह से बोले कोई कह रहा है बड़ा तेज बोलना है कोई कह रहा है कि आराम से बोलना है कोई कह रहा है कि चीख के बोलना है कोई कह रहा है धीमे से बोलना है तो आप बिल्कुल परेशान हो चुके हैं अलग अलग तरीके से आपने एग्जाम दे दिए हैं और अभी आपका रिजल्ट नहीं आ रहा है जस्ट मैसेज मी आज एस की टिप फॉर दैट जस्ट सेंड मी योर ऑडियो दैट्स अ स्पेशल ऑफर फॉर ऑल ऑफ यू मुझे अपनी ऑडियो भेजिए आज जस्ट चेक आउट योर ऑडियो ऑनलाइन एंड जस्ट की वैल्यूएशन ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ टू यू सो आई जस्ट टेल यू कि कितना टाइम आपको लगने वाला है हाउ मेनी फैक्टर्स एंड द सेक्टर्स यू हैव वर्क फॉर सो एवरी टाइम आई एम जस्ट रेडी फॉर यू इफ यू वॉन्ट टू गेट अ वैरिज कोड इन पी टी जस्ट कॉल मी एंड जस्ट मैसेज मी एनी टाइम हैव अस डे बाय बाय ऑन दी अदर एंड ऑफ द फोन इज जैक आर्टिक He is calling me from the Miami Federal Correctional Institute, a low security prison about 40 minutes drive from Miami Beach. Near the zoo and opposite one of Florida's famous legionary caging street malls. Jack is serving an 18 year sentence for orchestrating a $280 million Ponzi scheme. For many years, before he was caught, this guy funded the Australian tours of some of the biggest music acts in the world. On the other end of the phone is Jack Artsik. He's calling me from the Miami Federal Correctional Institute, a low security prison about 40 minutes drive from Miami Beach. Near the zoo and opposite one of Florida's famous legionary caging street malls. Jack is serving an 18 year sentence for orchestrating a $280 million Ponzi scheme. For many years, before he was caught, this guy funded the Australian tours of some of the biggest music acts in the world. Our earth moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the earth and this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the earth and generates the tides as you say but also we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun when there's an eclipse over a large area That's a remarkable coincidence that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun which of course is very far away. Our earth moon system where we live is a very unusual arrangement even by the standards of our solar system because we have this unusually large moon in proportion to the size of the earth and this has the moon's gravity has a very strong effect on the oceans of the earth and generates the tides as you say but also we have this unusual situation that our moon is big enough to completely cover the sun when there's an eclipse over a large area That's a remarkable coincidence that our large moon should have the same size in the sky compared to the even larger sun which of course is very far away. The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex workers are somehow free to tell the truth. When they are actually just as constrained as current employees, only the constraints are different. When you are in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. But when you are walking out the door, you also fail the truth test just as reliably. The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex workers are somehow free to tell the truth when they are actually just as constrained as current employees, only the constraints are different. When you are in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. But when you are walking out the door, you also fail the truth test just as reliably.
We've all seen it in the movies. After doing one hard years in prison, a man finally walks free. He steps outside, the sun on his face, the wind in his hair, ready to start over. A new beginning? A new life? The reality of getting out of prison can be very different. If you don't have anyone to pick you up, you might get a transport voucher. If you don't have anywhere to go, you might be given $275, two nights in a motel and one set of clothes. That's it. There are more people in prison in Australia than ever before. Right now, that's more than 40, zero people. If you take the official figures, that's 40% more than six years ago. We've all seen it in the movies. After doing one hard years in prison, a man finally walks free. He steps outside, the sun on his face, the wind in his hair, ready to start over. A new beginning? A new life? The reality of getting out of prison can be very different. If you don't have anyone to pick you up, you might get a transport voucher. If you don't have anywhere to go, you might be given $275 two nights in a motel and one set of clothes. That's it. There are more people in prison in Australia than ever before. Right now, that's more than 40, zero people. If you take the official figures, that's 40% more than six years ago. Over half of patients had what we called a no symptoms no asthma health belief. They thought about and managed their asthma as an acute episodic illness, the way someone would treat a cold or the flu. The felt when they had the wheezing or shortness of breath, that's when they had their asthma. And it made perfect sense for them to use the quick relief medicines and their chronic control of medicines then, but once they started feeling better, they felt there was no reason for using those medicines because they felt okay. Over half of patients had what we called a no symptoms, no asthma health belief. They thought about and managed their asthma as an acute episodic illness, the way someone would treat a cold or the flu. The felt when they had the wheezing or shortness of breath, that's when they had their asthma. And it made perfect sense for them to use the quick relief medicines and their chronic control of medicines then, but once they started feeling better, they felt there was no reason for using those medicines because they felt okay. I agree. I think that it does need some mass action by people to change their habits, and to apply pressure to governments and I there's a message here. Not just for those students who will enroll for the course, but I think for everybody that will listen to this album. This is a problem that affects every single one of us. It's not going to go away, there's a huge problem, and I think that we all have a role to play in addressing this problem. I agree, I think that it does need some mass action by people to change their habits, and to apply pressure to governments and I there's a message here. Not just for those students who will enroll for the course, but I think for everybody that will listen to this album. This is a problem that affects every single one of us. It's not going to go away, there's a huge problem, and I think that we all have a role to play in addressing this problem. The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex-workers are somehow free to tell the truth when actually they're just as constrained as current employees. Only the constraints are different. When you're in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. But when you're walking out the door, you also fail the truth test justice reliably.
The whole idea of listening to departing employees is foolish. I've never understood why companies set such store by exit interviews. They tell themselves that ex-workers are somehow free to tell the truth when actually they're just as constrained as current employees. Only the constraints are different. When you're in a job, you don't say what you really think because you want to keep the paychecks coming in. But when you're walking out the door, you also fail the truth test justice reliably. Birds actually evolved after mammals approximately 50 to 100 million years after mammals. So mammals are actually older than birds. Mammals actually did even evolve from reptiles. They evolved from a stem amniote ancestor and reptiles also evolved from a stem amniote amphibian-like ancestor. So we have to get rid of this idea of mammals being more advanced than birds and so forth. All that has to be thrown out the window. Birds actually evolved after mammals approximately 50 to 100 million years after mammals. So mammals are actually older than birds. Mammals actually did even evolve from reptiles. They evolved from a stem amniote ancestor and reptiles also evolved from a stem amniote amphibian-like ancestor. So we have to get rid of this idea of mammals being more advanced than birds and so forth. All that has to be thrown out the window. On a tour of Spain in 1912, a fellow traveler introduced Holst to astrology, and he became so curious that sowed the seeds of his spectacular orchestral suite, the planets, his most popular if not most representative of creation, which portrays the astrological rather than the mythological characters of seven planets in our solar system. Jupiter the bringer of jollity has both of its jovial feet planted firmly on the ground. On a tour of Spain in 1912, a fellow traveler introduced Holst to astrology, and he became so curious that sowed the seeds of his spectacular orchestral suite. The planets, his most popular if not most representative of creation, which portrays the astrological rather than the mythological characters of seven planets in our solar system. Jupiter the bringer of jollity has both of its jovial feet planted firmly on the ground. Well, it's a contested concept, and like many contested concepts, I think you can identify an agreed-upon core and then a sort of contested penumbra. I think that perhaps the agreed-upon core might be this. It's something held at once by academics and by academic institutions, and it is something like a privilege of freedom in the way in which the conduct of teaching and research is undertaken. Well, it's a contested concept, and like many contested concepts, I think you can identify an agreed-upon core and then a sort of contested penumbra. I think that perhaps the agreed-upon core might be this. It's something held at once by academics and by academic institutions, and it is something like a privilege of freedom in the way in which the conduct of teaching and research is undertaken. When you get hired somewhere, think about the company and think about the culture. Does it match who you are? For me, I loved aviation and I decided this is where I belonged. But the culture where I was didn't exactly match what I wanted to do. I'm not saying that a culture is good or bad because you can't think of culture in terms of countries. You can think of culture in terms of parts of the country, East Coast versus West Coast. I'm a West Coast person, that is also part of my culture piece which was also a bit of a challenge.
because where I ended up was on the East Coast. When you get hired somewhere, think about the company and think about the culture. Does it match who you are? For me, I loved aviation and I decided this is where I belonged. But the culture where I was didn't exactly match what I wanted to do. I'm not saying that a culture is good or bad because you can't think of culture in terms of countries. You can think of culture in terms of parts of the country, East Coast versus West Coast. I'm a West Coast person, that is also part of my culture piece which was also a bit of a challenge, because where I ended up was on the East Coast. Introduction to the history of psychology begins with a course, Why Study the History of Psychology? And I'd like to discuss several factors that are important to this. Because of course, as a formal discipline psychology came about in about 1879. And we, we tend to say with the founding of Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig, however, we need to also understand that the concerns of psychology were around will before this date. And therefore it helps to look at what historians have to say about how we go back in time and look at our past. So then when one begins to say why study the history of psychology, you can really hone in on four principles. Introduction to the history of psychology begins with a course, Why Study the History of Psychology? And I'd like to discuss several factors that are important to this. Because of course, as a formal discipline psychology came about in about 1879. And we, we tend to say with the founding of Wilhelm Wundt's laboratory in Leipzig, however, we need to also understand that the concerns of psychology were around will before this date. And therefore it helps to look at what historians have to say about how we go back in time and look at our past. So then when one begins to say why study the history of psychology, you can really hone in on four principles. In recent years, governments have resorted to selling off aging inner-city housing to raise money. This year, 79 apartments in the brutalist Sirius building with views of the Sydney Opera House and Harbour Bridge, sold for $150 million. Nearby, in the waterfront suburb of Millers Point, almost 200 properties were sold for $600 million. In Victoria, it's been projects like Northcote and North Melbourne. Just up the road from Pier in Waterloo, the infamous housing commission block known as the Suicide Towers is marked for demolition. The residents of those 2,000 apartments will be relocated to make way for more than 6,800 new units. In recent years, governments have resorted to selling off aging inner-city housing to raise money. This year, 79 apartments in the brutalist Sirius building, with views of the Sydney Opera House and Harbour Bridge, sold for $150 million. Nearby, in the waterfront suburb of Millers Point, almost 200 properties were sold for $600 million. In Victoria, it's been projects like Northcote and North Melbourne. Just up the road from Pier in Waterloo, the infamous housing commission block known as the Suicide Towers is marked for demolition. The residents of those 2,000 apartments will be relocated to make way for more than 6,800 new units. It's the thing, you'd have to be a seismic instrument to actually feel these ones but they are there. They occur at all depths, some of them quite deep, some of them quite shallow. And I was actually in conversation with one of your colleagues from the geology department about them and, about the location of them and where these fault structures go. It's been fantastic.
It's the thing, you'd have to be a seismic instrument to actually feel these ones but they are there. They occur at all depths, some of them quite deep, some of them quite shallow. And I was actually in conversation with one of your colleagues from the geology department about them and, about the location of them and where these fault structures go. It's been fantastic. Does that mean that you could try to figure out the connection between the relationship between behavior and these technological settings? In such a way that you could try to create a technological setting that allowed just those types of behavior? That's a very good, and it turns out to be a very simple question, perhaps too simple. But, that's an open question. Can you construct a technological center, so that it implies a certain type of behavior? Does that mean that you could try to figure out the connection between the relationship between behavior and these technological settings? In such a way that you could try to create a technological setting that allowed just those types of behavior? That's a very good, and it turns out to be a very simple question, perhaps too simple. But, that's an open question. Can you construct a technological center, so that it implies a certain type of behavior? And it's through ethnography to submerging yourself in an experience or in a situation as if you were one of the people inside of that situation. I think we can get a glimpse into these kinds of examples. We can understand different kinds of work. And they used to be a rich tradition of doing this kind of work like as such. And it's through ethnography to submerging yourself in an experience or in a situation as if you were one of the people inside of that situation. I think we can get a glimpse into these kinds of examples. We can understand different kinds of work. And they used to be a rich tradition of doing this kind of work like as such. Studying innovation and a lot of people would immediately think about new technologies. Nowadays we would think about apps and stuff like that. But what my research really tries to sort of poke at, is to understand the process of how innovation comes about. It's it's partly about the outcomes of new products and new processes and it often kind of has something to do with technology, um but I'm really interested in, you know. The process of how did these sort of novelties come about, how do they spread and, you know, I'm a geographer. So I'm then interested in where does innovation happen? Where does the process of innovation happen, and why there? Are there specific characteristics tied to a city, a region, a country that can help me explain why that innovation happened just there? Studying innovation and a lot of people would immediately think about new technologies. Nowadays we would think about apps and stuff like that. But what my research really tries to sort of poke at, is to understand the process of how innovation comes about. It's it's partly about the outcomes of new products and new processes and it often kind of has something to do with technology, um but I'm really interested in, you know. The process of how did these sort of novelties come about, how do they spread and, you know, I'm a geographer. So I'm then interested in where does innovation happen? Where does the process of innovation happen, and why there? Are there specific characteristics tied to a city, a region, a country that can help me explain why that innovation happened just there? Look, only about three weeks ago, I was asked if I was a guest at the particular hotel I was booked into for a week in Broome in Western Australia. I was at the pool with a little grandson, a 12-year-old grandson, and a niece who is 32. 
and the fact that we were Aboriginal was I think the main reason for that question to be asked of us, and my response to that was, yes, I am a guest and this is the room number that we're in. Is there a problem? Oh no, have a nice day was the response. But there was another lady in the pool, and you know she may have been Aboriginal or not, I'm not sure, but she wasn't asked the question, we were. Her. Look only about three weeks ago, I was asked if I was a guest at the particular hotel, I was booked into for a week in Broome in Western Australia. I was at the pool with a little grandson, a 12-year-old grandson, and a niece who is 32. And the fact that we were Aboriginal was I think the main reason for that question to be asked of us, and my response to that was, yes, I am a guest and this is the room number that we're in. Is there a problem? Oh no, have a nice day was the response. But there was another lady in the pool, and you know she may have been Aboriginal or not, I'm not sure, but she wasn't asked the question, we were. This is a story about how we're in the midst of a global extinction crisis, dozens of species die out around the world each year. It statistically hasn't been this bad since the dinosaurs disappeared 65 million years ago. And it's about the sad reality that Australia is a world leader when it comes to pushing our native animals to extinction. This is exacerbated by a shrinking pool of money available to address it. So this story is about how, in this desperate scramble for that precious conservation dollar, sometimes scientific integrity gets lost. This is a story about how we're in the midst of a global extinction crisis, dozens of species die out around the world each year. It statistically hasn't been this bad since the dinosaurs disappeared 65 million years ago. And it's about the sad reality that Australia is a world leader when it comes to pushing our native animals to extinction. This is exacerbated by a shrinking pool of money available to address it. So this story is about how, in this desperate scramble for that precious conservation dollar, sometimes scientific integrity gets lost.